Hi everyone, my name is Terence from AdMaker and I'm the co-founder of Eddy. Um, and today I'll be talking about how, how Eddy is uh, set up to prepare learners for the future. I'm sharing this in conjunction with the Connected Learning Summit 2023. And for those of you listening, listening in and part of the summit, I hope to engage with more of you at our live session on the 26th of October. Before I begin, I want you to meet Alex. Alex is a dedicated English language arts teacher who's working tirelessly to engage his students. He recognizes that his learners need to be equipped with skills that prepare them for the future of work. At the same time, Alex faces challenges in his mission. He feels overwhelmed by the range of emerging technologies needed to develop these skills, and he struggles to find affordable professional development that meets his needs. Now, these difficulties are not unique to Alex. They resonate with classroom teachers across the nation, especially novice teachers in elementary and middle schools. Over 50% of teachers feel unsupported in integrating technology. They lack proper training and they lack proper resources. Teachers like Alex are grappling with the pressure to adapt to new technologies without adequate support and resources from their schools. At Edmaker, we've developed Eddy, an online resource and professional development platform to support teachers like Alex. Now, Eddy has more than 50 resources so far including problem-based learning lessons that are designed to incorporate the creative use of technology in the classroom. These lesson plans have helped hundreds of teachers show their students what it means to create with emerging technologies and design unique artifacts showcasing their work. But how do we design these lesson packages and how do we start? Um, I'd like to spend some time walking you through our design considerations. Um, we thought of our design considerations in a first principles approach, and we thought of two main questions. The first main question is, where do we want our students to go? Our team has a strong background in education, and most of us are former classroom teachers. So we ask ourselves, what do we want our students to learn? Um, 10 years from now, when our students enter the workforce, what kind of skill sets should they have, right? Um, do they have to have tech skills, right? Um, future of work skills, uh, reading, writing, arithmetic, and what is the current system actually not teaching them, right? Where is the gap that we want to plug? Where is the gap that we want to find ourselves occupying? And what is the content and skill sets that we want our students to learn? So that was the first question. And now the second question is, um, how do we get there, right? So with the assumption that, you know, the teacher as facilitator is, is vital, and the teacher as facilitator is going to be important in the classroom for the foreseeable future. How do we help to reduce the implementation friction for our teachers? How do we make it easier for them to implement technology in their classroom, not harder? And how do we actually create um, resources that are usable for them? Right. With these key questions in mind, we came out with a set of five, uh, five principles. Right. The first principle is constructivism. Um, the idea that we learn best by creating things, right? Um, Seymour Puppet uh, has a very, um, he's one of the, Seymour Puppet is one of the uh, key figures behind constructivism. And he had a seminal quote in 1980s where he was talking about, well, is it better to let computer program the child or the child program the computer, right? Um, deliberating between these contesting ideas of, yes, if we don't offer a guided learning experience, the child's mind, the child, the way the child interacts with people is going to be influenced by how he's interacting with a computer, right? Um, and, and on the other hand, if we support students well and we scaffold the experience for the students, um, the child feels empowered to program the computer, the child views the computer, views artificial intelligence, and views technology as something to, to influence, to use as a design tool, right? So how do we achieve the latter and not the former? How do we create these experiences where we encourage students to create artifacts? And one of the ways we do so is through project-based learning. Right. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail about what project-based learning is, but it is a um, way of weaving in certain constructionist philosophies um, in a very deliberate, intentional way that can help build these learning experiences for students. So that was the first principle that we arrived at. A second principle was of curricular connections. 
So when teachers use our lesson resources, we know they're not using it in a vacuum, right? They have standards to teach towards. They realize they have not just one-to-one -one teaching, they have 10, 20, 30 students in a class, right? How do we connect our lesson packages to these broader academic goals that they have to fulfill, bearing in mind that their time is limited, curriculum time is limited, and they're not going to use our lesson resources no matter how well-crafted they are if they can't find a way to relate it to the um, curriculum and the standards that they have. So that was the second consideration. The third consideration was one of relevance. How can we shape lessons that are relevant to students' personal experiences, that are culturally responsive, and that resonate with students? Um, and the obvious um, way to do so was through uh, weaving in real-world experiences, elements around sustainability, around social justice, around personal advocacy, were all quite instrumental in helping to weave lesson plans and construct lesson packages that were relevant to students' experiences. So the fourth consideration is one of accessibility. Uh, and I think we can see this on different levels, right? On one hand, accessibility in terms of making sure um, technology is, is made accessible to all. That's about the equitable access um, to technology. And this means things like making sure we use software that has a free model, or at the very least a freemium model, so that um, all students in a class across regions will be able to access the technology. Uh, most of our lesson plans, as you'll see, um, can be run on Chromebooks. They don't need fancy software um, or fancy equipment. And this is, I think, uh, something that a lot of teachers might have a misconception on that, you know, using technology, using emerging tech might require fancy technology. And what we're here to say is, no, not necessarily. Um, you might be able to find resources and software online that allows you to um, expose your students to emerging tech. Um, another level of accessibility is in terms of um, creating resources and modifications for different subgroups of students, English language learners, high, high ability learners, weaker learners, basically different sub um, groups of students who might not always be engaged with a regular curriculum. How do you tailor your resources to cater for these for their needs? So those are certain considerations that we have when it comes to accessibility. Um, last but not least, we have community, right? Fostering a certain community-centered design to allow learners to exchange ideas and build on each other's ideas, and also allow teachers to do the same, to exchange um, tips and ideas on how they conducted lessons and allow for that you know, cross-pollination and exchange of information. How do you intentionally build in features, intentionally build in features that encourage learners to um, share their ideas with each other and build on their ideas. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce uh, one of my uh, favorite lesson packages that we have on Eddy called Discovering Language Superpowers at NLP. And we're going to see how the design considerations actually um, are related in the construction of that lesson package. package. Um, but first of all, let me introduce to you um, this lesson package called Discovering Language Superpowers with NLP. So this is our lesson package, Discovering Language Superstars of NLP. Now, um, all of our lesson packages involve different components, right? Um, they closely mirror how a teacher would actually conduct one within the classroom. So of course, we have an introduction where we give an overview, as well as the lesson overview where we break the lesson into key components. It's really important to teachers because they need to know uh, where the learners are at before they um, conduct the lesson and they need to tailor a, they might need to tailor a lesson according to where their learners are at. We also include lesson objectives and learning outcomes. Lesson objectives are higher level um, objectives um, outlining what a student should know at the end of the classroom. Uh, behavioral focused, looking at what we want the students to demonstrate. We also provide a full suite of teaching resources, including a slide deck, um, web links to different resources that we use, third-party resources that we use within the activity, a video tutorial, as well as worksheets that teachers may need. For each of the opening activity, main activity, and the closing activity, um, we feature slides in, uh, we, we feature 
lesson plan outline according to a slide by slide kind of uh, rundown. So it's basically a walkthrough of how you would conduct the lesson as if you were a teacher going through a set of slides, right? Uh, and we found that this is the most, um, this is the way that teachers relate to the best. It's the way that um, they find most intuitive in terms of planning out and executing the lessons. Um, we've included certain small um, features allowing them to actually click on a slide and have it pop up for them to map, for them to understand better, understand what is expected of that particular, uh, that particular stage of the lesson. So this happens for the opening activity, the main activity, as well as the closing activity. And um, we also have an assessment section where we outline um, rubrics. that showcase the teachers actually what we expect students to learn and how they can actually evaluate students um, after they've conducted the lesson. So this um, lesson, um, I'm going to dive a bit deeper into the main activity. Um, this lesson actually involves um, students using a software called Pictoblox to explore how computers understand human language. They are going to use a software, this software, to actually train a model and create a chatbot of their own. And this chatbot will be able to give them um, movie recommendations. All right. So uh, the whole process involves a few things, right? They are going to be going to this particular. Well, maybe maybe let me let me rewind a little bit, right, and talk about the lesson as a whole before I jump into the main activity. This lesson is intended to introduce our learners to natural language processing, which is a branch of artificial intelligence, which focuses on the interaction between computers and human language. And as, as I've mentioned just now, since the idea is to train a computer, um, our learners in this classroom will be learning using picto blocks to train a computer using block coding. And as I mentioned earlier, um, the main objective is to get them to use Pictoblocks to develop a movie recommender, which will give them a recommendation for different movies depending on um, a set of inputs, right? So as you can see, this is the software that we'll be using um, for this lesson. It's called Pictoblocks, and what it allows you to do is to create a very simple AI chatbot using this sprite here, uh, this little bear called Toby. So Toby is a chatbot that is also a movie recommender. It's able to suggest different movies depending on how you're feeling. If I play it, Toby will say, hello, welcome to the virtual theater. And it'll also ask me, how do you feel today? If I say I am, for instance, feeling good. Toby will suggest that you can watch some action-packed movies like Jumanji, the Harry Potter series, and so on and so forth. Um, and on the other hand, if, um, if I say I feel differently, if I am a little, say, uh, curious, for instance, right? Toby will suggest I watch some science fiction movies. And he'll also give me examples of these different movies to watch. So the way that we've built this up is to get students, is to provide this code for students. It's a code base that allows them to, allows them the, the, the structure or the scaffold um, to build a chatbot like Toby. And what they can do is they can actually add different categories of movies to, um, to make Toby reply differently, right? So this is a starting point for them to build their, their other movie categories on. Um, I could, for example, right click copy block and I, I could, for example, say I define instead of few good movies, I might say horror movies, right? And then I would have to add the different terms that would cause Toby to, to recommend me um, horror movies, right? Now, What's cool about this is that we are presenting students, we're not getting them to write this from scratch because we know it's going to take a while. Um, but what we're actually trying to do here is to get them to recognize that if you change different variables in this um, block coding, in, pro in this programming uh, interface, your results 
on the stage here is going to look different. And this opens up the student to a whole world of different possibilities, right? From a category of, from three categories of movies, they can create more, more categories. Like I said, horror movies, rom-coms, different types of movies that would help them not just uh, understand how pictoblocks and block coding works, but also help them in their English, right? Because then they'll have to think of different adjectives that are related to different genres of movies. So that's how we help students um, build these unique uh, applications in a very constructivist way, not by telling them, okay, step one, you got to do this. Step two, you got to do this. Step three, you got to do this, which is the worst way to teach coding or any kind of technical skill, right? What we are doing is different. We're giving them the template, the, a code template, and we're saying, go crazy with it, right? Edit it, take stuff out, tinker with it, figure out what's, what goes wrong, figure out how to, how, to, how to amend it to make it better. Everything is in your hands, right? And the result is an open-ended uh, lesson, an open-ended activity, where with 20 students, you're going to get 20 different results. So this whole blended approach um, makes learning pretty interactive, while at the same time empowering students to grasp the significance of NLP in the in the digital age. And in the process, they also build critical thinking and problem-solving activities that are really valuable for the workforce. Um, but now that I've, I've ran through this, this link pretty quickly, um, you can actually find this um, lesson plan um, on the... Hang on a moment. You can actually uh, find this lesson plan um, on the description of this YouTube vid uh, video below, or you can go to this link, edifateachers.com slash lesson plan slash discovering language superpowers with NLP. Right now, I want to talk a bit about our design considerations and how this lesson that we've just gone through actually map onto the design considerations. First, constructivism, right? We learn best by creating things. In this lesson, students are creating their own unique NLP checkbots. So that's how constructivism is checked. Second, curricular connections. How do we want to connect our lesson plans to broader academic goals? Now, in this lesson, um, students are actually using adjectives. They actually brainstorm different types of adjectives that connect to different movie genres. And they use these adjectives as training data for um, their, their app in Pictoblocks. So, that meets certain ELA standards at the elementary school level, which helps teachers actually um, deepen students' knowledge of adjectives and how to use them. Adjectives, synonyms, and how to use them, right? Because they have to develop different synonyms of the same word in order to train the model well. Now, the third one is of relevance. How can we shape lessons that are relevant to students' personal experiences? The answer to this is pretty simple. Well, kids love movies right? Uh, my students couldn't stop talking about the types of movies they would enjoy, right? They kept on giving me different genres, which I never saw, never knew existed. So this is about um, achieving a sense of personal relevance to them and meeting, it where the, meeting them where the students are. Fourth, accessibility. Pictoblocks is browser-based and it works on Chromebooks. So any teacher with a Chromebook, um, with students with Chromebooks, uh, will be able to use it. You don't need fancy equipment. You don't need high-powered computing in order to introduce emerging technologies to your students. And the last one is really on fostering community-centered design. How do we build communities, right? Um, in our lesson packages, uh, in this lesson plan, we give students the opportunity to um, share their product with their peers and their peers actually get to test their product right test their chatbots to see if they are relevant uh, to see if they work and if to see if they function accurately lessons like discovering language superpowers are the bread and butter of eddie we have a collection of over 40 customizable lesson plans to date and this number is growing by the day all of our lesson packages feature detailed lesson guides visually engaging slides as well as rubrics to assess student learning they're also standards aligned to NGSS, Common Core, and ISTE standards. On top of our lesson packages, Eddie also features a complementary professional development program. Our PD uses a problem of practice framework to build confidence, skills, and mindsets around teaching emerging technologies. The program uses a problem of practice framework with both asynchronous as well as synchronous components. While this professional pro uh, development program is beyond the scope of my sharing today, it remains an important component of our work to support teachers. 
With all the resources on Eddy, teachers like Alex now have the tools to spark students' passion for tech-infused learning and create classrooms where emerging technologies expand access to creative education. By investing in teach quality teacher support and student engagement, we can empower teachers to transform education together. We invite you to explore our resources further at www.edifateachers.com. And if you're interested in partnering with Eddy for, uh, to transform education and empower both educators and students, please reach out. Thank you.